All right, welcome back, Red Eyes members. Thank you for joining us. We are going to dive straight into our conversation with John Harris from TPUC.org. Hello. Hey, John. I'm here. Um, so you're a good friend of uh, of Brian Garish? Oh yeah. It, um, funny enough, um, we've we've known each other for a couple of years now, and we got to get, we got to know each other through this. Ah. Oh, um, okay. One friend's um, contacted this. Uh, uh, thought it would be a very good idea that we spoke, um, and we we ended up talking. And I've recently been down and I've done a job for Brian at his house, and also done a job for his dad. Mm, nice. Um, so I kind of yeah, we're really good friends. We share information, and it's funny how Brian's information and my information are starting to merge. Yeah, the dovetail. Very interesting. It's very interesting because he he's been telling me for a long, long time that children were being stolen. By yeah. social services and, and, and you know in, in this country, mm. and I could I knew he had the evidence as well, um, so I kind of you know I didn't um, I, I, I couldn't see how it was possible. I now proved how it's possible. I know how they do it now. Okay, and it's all the birth certificate. Really, and and yeah. um, what do you do? You know what the purposes for this are? What what are they using the children for? Are these like is is this connected with the the pedophilia, the, s- the slave sex network? Yeah, and stuff it's like that? kind of. Yeah, there is there is something along them lines. Brian knows more about that. Mm. I I kind of see it. The social services is is I found it to be a PLC. And that is. So it's a public limited company. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and public limited company is obviously got shareholders, and when when obviously with. Uh, Having shareholders, they need to make a profit, and the only way they can do that is by stealing children. And they are actually working to quotas, so you mean they actually have to steal children to quotas. Huh. And, and do, do you know who they're being sold to? No, I haven't got a clue. I wish I knew. Because I, I've got a funny feeling Brian's going to find out sooner okay. or later. Okay, huh. because I've heard this uh, a few years ago. Allegedly, kids were being taken for such gruesome things as harvest uh, of their organs and things like that, you know, even like for older, you know, richer people, they they took their kidneys or they took their other, you know, parts of their body that they needed and gruesome stuff like that. It wouldn't shock me, in yeah. the least. It, well, I'll be quite honest with you, um, I, I, nothing shocks me nowadays. Yeah. No, there isn't, you know, and I don't kind of, um, I, it's really strange actually because I, 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 Looked at fear for a long, long time. I looked at how fear um, affects people, mm. and I suddenly realised that the only time you actually fear is when you're actually thinking about something. That's when you should, because you create the fear yourself. Yeah, of course. Um, so if you, yeah, you know, obviously if you're if you're frightened of a dark room and you walk into the dark room, the reason you you fear is because you're thinking about walking into that dark room and you're you're frightened of it. So you create the fear. And I actually believe that the symbolism that's been been deployed all over the world for the Ministry of Funny Handshakes and all the other, <laughs> you know, um, it's, it, it, is, it creates its own fear. It's only there because they someone said, this is this, you should fear it, and you create the fear. Yeah. And I do believe that. I believe it. I don't believe anybody's a god. I don't believe in any form of magic. don't believe in anything like that, mumbo-jumbo. I believe in what I can see, what I can touch. The reason I say I know there's something above us because I feel it. I feel it in me. I, I actually... And I, it, it's given me evidence as well. It mm. has given me... It's very, very subtle. It works very subtly. That's the beauty of this, is the, is the subtleness it works with. Hmm. And every single day, every one of us are given these subtle little messages. It's whether you can bother your ass to pick up on them. Yeah. That's all it is. That's all it's about. And then once you remove yourself from living in the ego, you see these little subtle things. You see them. And hmm. I work with a very, very basic and ancient form of numerology mm-hmm. that's just never wrong. It's never wrong. The numbers never, ever are wrong. And I've come away from it because, but it just kind of tells me today's four. Four is a really good day today because it's a catalyst that causes change. It means that there's going to be a change today to something that 
I, I, it, some, something will change that need that I. How can I explain it? The catalyst is generally um, something that causes change, but doesn't change because it doesn't need to, but hmm. it causes change. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so not for you personally, but out into the world, the ripples. Yeah, are, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that. Okay, it's hard to explain. Yeah, yeah, it's like the catalyst that causes change. But then, what you can do is you can you can take the whole the whole day. You can take the day, and it, it gives you different messages. It, it tells you different things. And what I do is I don't really run my life by it, but I like today's a catalyst. So something's going to change today. Um, And it could be something very, very small, or it could be something very big. It's generally very subtle. Yeah. Um, today's also the concept of saying sacred. So it's it's something that I people obviously the way that this was wrote is is it's got like quite biblical meanings. But I take something that's quite uh, sacred as to being um, to me is you know something that's sacred to me. You know, I kind of like. I, can, I don't know how to explain it in mm. in, in a better way, yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's very very difficult to explain because mm. it's kind of got all the meanings are quite biblical. But I, I, a friend of mine is Brian's one of the best people I know actually doing it. It's the deciphering the Bible. He actually can decipher it, and he, he he gets the Bible and he reads it in a completely different way. My partner does exactly the same. Mm -hmm, and my mm -hmm. partner said to me one night, Jesus didn't sacrifice himself. He sacrificed his ego, his person. Mm -hmm. That's what he. That's what it's all about. He just left the message. Now, whether that story is true, there's none of us can confirm it because none of us were there. Yeah. But metaphorically, it's absolutely bang on because it's about sacrificing the ego. So, it, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, absolutely. And it's what I feel also. It, it's it's another symbol, if you will, and 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 that means or a mythological story, a character, you know, whatever, whatever way we choose to interpret it, it's we can always put our own connotation to it. I mean, because what you mentioned in, when we talked in the first hour was the literal interpretation of of this that evolves into the Messiah complex that that feels that you know you have to sacrifice yourself in that sense. But again, it it becomes a symbol, so it means that you have we can always put our own interpretation into it and i think that that's um that's the best thing to to describe describe it and again then it's up to people to do their own you know oh absolutely yeah this is it mine mine is just one of six billion views <laughs> right, right yeah that's, that's all it is yeah. yeah i mean it, it's just uh I'm, i'm not saying this yeah i i only talk about like i said i don't do the the evangelist bit anymore you know i only talk about what i personally You know, it's the experiences that I've gone through in my life that have led me to where I am now. Yeah. To not a greater understanding of the truth, but a greater understanding of me. Absolutely, exactly. That's what it's all about: the discovery of of yourself. And I think that what Absolutely. you what yeah. you what you primarily talked about in the first segment is the is the awareness of of what it, what it is that we are experiencing, be it uh, this artificial system that we've been talking about or whatever it is. It's it's that idea that you can actually if you will remove yourself your your essence if you will a little bit away from the body and not be so so close to it in that sense and, and have a little bit of distance to it and like have it have that overarching awareness of what is it that i'm really a part of at this moment what is happening to me what am i you know agreeing on what am i doing what what are the rules here you know things like that and i think it's it boils down to that simple idea of of uh, of greater awareness and when oh, each absolutely. of us you know try to incorporate yeah. that something amazing i like happens. words of wisdom i like words of wisdom yeah I and the reason i like words of wisdom is because they bypass the ego because the ego can't understand them yeah the words words of wisdom are riddles to the brain and the reason they're riddles to the brain is because then they're designed to bypass the brain. That's why wisdom is so powerful. But you can't be given something that you already possess. You just have to find a way of connecting to it. Yeah. And what we look at in the world is a world that's abounds by knowledge, but it has no wisdom whatsoever. There is no wisdom. And we've been told since time immemorial that men especially have to connect to their feminine side. Mm-hmm. The feminine side is not about putting lipstick on and wearing a short skirt, <laughs> <It's, Nope. laughs> which most men would say. What it's <laughs> simply about is connecting to your wisdom, and yeah. your wisdom is your intuition, yep. your gut feeling. You know, I've got this 
this gut feeling that, uh, you know, it, how many times do, you, do you, people say, I've just got this gut feeling about it? And that's their intuition saying, look, he's, he's shouting at you. Look, 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 I'm talking to you. Listen to me for once. Listen to me. Because if you listen once, you'll listen again. Yeah. That's all it's saying to you. I mean, it, and it, people say to me, you know, oh, spiritual people, you know, oh, this bloke sat on a mountain for 30 years and come down and blow and knows everything. And, <laughs> and I said, but isn't spirituality about love? And isn't anybody who loves anything spiritual people can't understand what i'm talking about i said you don't need to know everything mm. about what's going on in the world to love no all you need to and and when you one of the things that i've discovered uh, and personally in myself is this and this is this is it is quite it, it's lovely when you come come to it it's hard but you you can you can do it and i do it i i i'm starting it's becoming easier for me now is the fact that when you release the ego and you let go of it, you suddenly learn what it's like to love unconditionally. Because it's only the ego that stops you loving unconditionally. Mm. And, and that's the, it. The All there is, yeah. yeah, is in the world is unconditional love. It's about it's it's not it's not for me to judge. It's not for me to opinionate. Really, it's it's not for me to do any of that. Mm. I basically said simply. If I don't want to be controlled, then I should want for no form of control. Mm. And that's absolutely true. It is absolutely true. All I know that is that I've got to love everything. And sometimes the hardest things to love are the ones that need it the most. Mm. You know, yeah, and yeah. they're the hardest to love. People say to me, I sat in a conversation with um, some people a little while ago and someone said, about they were saying the best way to sort this out is to go down to Parliament, drag a couple out, and hang them. <laughs> I says, "Oh right, yeah, that's a brilliant way of sorting it out." Yeah, I right, said, right. "You know, Gandhi actually said an eye for an eye would leave just leave the world completely blind, which is absolutely true." Yeah. Gandhi, I mean, what Gandhi, a lot of great bits of wisdom that came from Gandhi, which the brain doesn't understand but the heart does. Mm. Um, I said, "But if Tony Blair walked through the door." at this door at, the mo at this moment in time and you pointed a gun at him, I would stand in the way. And he couldn't understand that. And I said, well, the reason being is because Tony Blair is a victim. He's yeah. more a victim than you are. Yeah, there you go. And he needs my help to get back to being the human being and getting out of the person mm -hmm. because well, his exactly. life is the ego. And the only reason he can do what he can do it's because he lives in the ego, and the ego has dropped a shutter door down behind the eyes mm. and cut him off from his emotions. So, but sooner or later, because of what's actually happening in the world, them shutter doors are going to be lifted, and poor old Tony Blair and George Bush and all these people in the world who live in the person have done these nasty things are suddenly going to have to live with the realization of what they've done. Yeah, and that's the oh, only thing well, that they they need to do in order to rem remedy. Absolutely, you know, because it, it's it's what you give out, you're going to get back. Yeah, and they're going to get it back. The only thing is that the powers that be, that whoever it is who've done whatever they've done, um, and I don't put any name to them, but whoever it is, have basically they worked out something very simple. All you have to do is play on the ego, and all you have to do is build a world that revolves around greed. But like I said with the fire, greed is like a fire. Greed can never end. Because if you build something and you've always been greedy, you can't just switch that off. Mm -hmm. And in the end, enough is never enough. Mm. And they will consume everything and within that process consume themselves. And, I, and I'm thinking if that actually is a... Um more of a of a law of nature in a way actually meaning that uh that's it's it's like a a parasite in that sense that you know that turns on itself or when it finally have killed the host if you will 